In this video, you're going to learn how to factor trinomials where the leading coefficient is not 1. These tend to be the more difficult ones to factor. So when it's in this form, ax squared plus bx plus c, but this number that comes in front of the x squared term, this leading coefficient, if it's not equal to 1, what we're going to do is we're going to say to ourselves, what two numbers multiply to a times c, but add to this middle coefficient, b, and then what we're going to do is we're going to split the middle term and factor by grouping. So we're going to go through two examples. Let's look at this first example. So the technique that I use here is I take this a value, which is 3, times the c value, which is negative 10, and that multiplies to negative 30. Then I look at the middle coefficient. This is actually understood to be a negative 1. And so I'm going to find two numbers that multiply to negative 30, but those same two numbers have to add to negative 1. So you could do 1 and negative 30, or 2 and negative 15. You can go through all the combinations, but in this case, you can see that it's going to be negative 6 times positive 5. That multiplies to negative 30, and negative 6 plus 5 equals negative 1. So then what you're going to do, once you find these two numbers, is you're going to go ahead and take this middle term, and you're going to split it into negative 6x plus 5x. Remember to put that variable x in there. If you add these together, it gives you back the negative 1x. So we're not really changing the problem. We're just splitting the middle term into two parts. So now notice what we have. We have one, two, three, four terms. When you have four terms, you try the method called factoring by grouping. And the way you do that is you look at the first two terms and you say, what can I factor out of those first two terms? Well, the greatest common factor is going to be 3x. Now, what some students like to do is they like to just make this into a fraction and put 3x in the denominator and then reduce. So you can see the 3s would cancel. x squared divided by x is just going to give us x. And then over here, 6 divided by 3 is going to give us 2. Of course, a negative divided by positive is a negative, And the x's cancel. Now, if you're not sure if you did it right, you can distribute the 3x back into the parentheses, and you'll get back the 3x squared minus 6x. Now, for the last two terms, what's the greatest common factor? Well, that's going to be a positive 5. And again, if you divide both these terms by 5, you can see you're going to be left with x and negative 2, because we have a negative 10 divided by a positive 5. Okay, now you can see that in this first group and in this second group, what do they have in common? They have this x minus 2. So what we're going to do is we're going to factor out the x minus 2 like a greatest common factor. So when you factor something out, it's like dividing it out. So it's kind of like dividing this first group by x minus 2 and the second group by x minus 2. And you can see what you're left with here is just going to be 3x plus 5. Now, if you want to see if you've got it right, you can distribute twice and see if you get back the original, and you can verify that you factored it correctly. Let's take a look at another example. If you feel like you're getting the hang of this, try number two here. We've got 12x squared plus 14x minus 6. How would you factor that one? Well, remember, the first step in factoring, if you can, is always to factor out a greatest common factor. So is there something that we can divide out of all three of these terms? Well, it looks like they're all divisible by 2. So if we divide everything by 2 here, we're going to be left with 6x squared plus 7x minus 3. Again, you can check your work by distributing the 2 back in. But notice what we have. We have a trinomial, three terms, but the leading coefficient is not 1. So here we can use the AC method to split the middle term and factor by grouping. So we say what number or what two numbers multiply to 6 times negative 3, which is negative 18, but they have to also add to this middle coefficient, which is positive 7. So you could do 1 and negative 18, or negative 1 and positive 18, or 3 and negative 6, etc. It looks like in this case it's going to be uh, positive 9 and negative 2, because 9 plus negative 2 is 7, and 9 times negative 2 is negative 18. So taking these two numbers now, we're going to take this middle term, this 7x, and we're going to split it up into 9x minus 2x. Now you might be saying, Mario, does it matter the order? Like if I switch these, does it matter? No, it's not going to matter. You're going to get the same answer in the end. So don't uh, be concerned about that. Then just bring down the last term and this first term, and we're just going to set this 2 aside. We'll bring it back in at the very end. So we've got four terms. We're going to factor by grouping. So we look at the first two terms, 
and we say, hmm, is there something that I can factor out of these first two terms? Well, the greatest common factor is going to be 3x. So if I factor out a 3x, let's see, I'm left with 2x plus 3. I'm just reducing. See, 9x divided by 3x is 3. And then over here in this second group, what's the greatest common factor? Well, there really isn't one, but if it starts with a negative, I like to factor out a negative 1. If it's an, Anytime we have these two terms, if the first term is negative, I like to factor out a negative something. In this case, there's really nothing, so let's factor out a negative 1, which is going to leave us with 2x plus 3. Now, notice what we have here. We have 2x plus 3 and 2x plus 3 in common between the first group and the second group. So let's go ahead and factor out that 2x plus 3. Remember, factoring is like dividing out this 2x plus 3 from both groups. And when you do that, you can see these are going to cancel, leaving us with just 3x minus 1. And that's our final factored form. Again, if you want to check your work, you can distribute twice, and you'll get back the original. Now, remember this greatest common factor 2, that's part of the problem as well, so we're going to put that in front. So you, I would FOIL these binomials together, then multiply everything by 2. That'll give us back the original, and you've got it factored. If you like this video and you want to learn more about factoring, not just trinomials, but difference of two squares, sum of two cubes, difference of two cubes, other types of factoring, check out the video that I did right there, and we'll get some more practice learning how to factor various types. I'll see you in that video.